Okay, I know what you're thinking. Take Walker, you lying dumb head. Why are you such a dumb liar? Well, it's a really long story. Suffice to say, the reason that I expected not to be able to do anything yesterday actually didn't pan out. It was a giant waste of my time, and I'm kind of still upset about it. I haven't finished yelling at people either, but I told myself, because, you know, I posted that video yesterday. I'm recording on Wednesday. I don't know when I'm going to get this out, hopefully today. But I, I posted that video yesterday, and Adelpha Phage was all like, hey, I really want to see Applejack and Nightmare Moon. And I was like, well, I don't know. But I told myself, I finished doing all the visual design work for Nightmare Moon's deck that I would do a video about it. And I couldn't. I got about 85% through yesterday. The character card was really graphics intense. But I finished it today, and I said, you know what? It's my channel. I'm not my dad. I can't tell me what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce you all to Wave 2 of Sentinels of the MLP-verse. I didn't do this the first time. Wave 1 is... Twilight Sparkle, Discord, and Our Town, which you've already seen, but I didn't really release them with a whole lot of thought. So from here on out, every wave is going to have a hero, a villain, an environment, and one or more variants. So today, what I am showing off is Nightmare Moon is our villain. I, I, gotta, I gotta flip this already, because look at that card. I'm so pleased with how that came out. I'm sorry for tooting my own horn, but I just, I fucking love that shot. And with the moon in between the two words, ooh, anyway. Our hero is Applejack. Our environment is the Everfree Forest. And our variant is Future Twilight. And we'll get to all of them in just a little bit. Joining them today is Titan and the Adamant Sentinels, because I haven't had them on the show too much. I'm not going to be releasing these decks just yet. Soon, though, and I'll at least make a note in one of these videos when I do. There's still a villain variant and a twilight variant that needs some working on. But that's neither here nor there. Today our goal is to traipse through the other free forest, see if we can unravel the mystery of Nightmare Moon, and then stop her from bringing about Eternal Night. So at the start of the game, Nightmare Moon enters play, Old Pony's Tale side up, search the villain deck for four relics, put them in the villain trash, I have done that. Shuffle the villain deck, shuffle the environment deck, and reveal cards until three targets are revealed, put them into play, and shuffle the other revealed cards in the environment deck. So so, what we're going to be doing is fighting against the environment for a little bit. Our first three targets are Steven Magnet, the Cockatrice, and the Hydra. And if you're interested in learning how to make decks for Tabletop Simulator, I'm going to have a video at some point, hopefully this month, showing you just what I did to make this deck, uh, starring Everfree Forest and Applejack. So you're getting a sneak peek before the sneak peek. You get to see them in action before you see the nuts and bolts behind what happened. All right, so Nightmare Moon is immune to damage. At this point, she's just a mist floating around, laying obstacles in the hero's way and trying to trip you up. Cards under this card are not considered in play. The first time each turn an environment card is destroyed, place it under this card. So once per turn, you can get a card underneath her. This is what you want to do in order to flip her, but it's only one per turn because there are cards out there like Emergency Evac and End of Days, and they could make this really trivial to do. <laughs> During the environment play phase, the players choose to play one or more environment cards. So it comes to the environment turn, we go, okay, we've got two cards under her, we need four more, so we're going to play three cards right now. But the intention is, you make a decision, you say, we're playing three cards, then you play the top three cards of the environment deck. You don't get to stop early. When a villain card will be played, discard it instead. At the start of the villain turn, each player may destroy one of their hero cards. If at least two cards sharing a keyword are destroyed this way, destroy a non-target environment card. This is a clause that I put in specifically for if you rolled poorly, and you're playing a team with no environment destruction in an environment that doesn't have a lot of targets. It's like, say, Freedom Tower. This way, you can at least be assured of one card per round. But this team has environment destruction, we don't have to worry about that. Then if there are H plus 2, so 6 or more cards under this card, flip this card. At the end of the villain turn, Nightmare Moon deals the hero with the highest HP, psychic damage equal to the number of environment cards in play. And that's all we should need for the moment. So we start off by just discarding the top card of the villain deck. It's a guard. And then she hits the highest for 3 Three, and that's Titan. So Applejack, if you're not familiar with her, and again, I really like how this card came out. Even if having her in a swamp is not exactly characteristic, but she's a country farm girl and she bucks apple trees and gets apples for everybody. And there are some trees in her deck 
And there are some other things in her deck. Let's see what I got. Well, yeah, I should read off the environment cards here. Steven Magnet, this card is immune to damage from hero targets, which is unfortunate. In the environment turn, each player may draw a card, then deal this card cold damage equal to the number of cards drawn this turn. So we can wear him down by drawing cards. He's the helpful monster. We've got a Cockatrice, and in the environment turn, this card deals a non-environment target with the lowest HP one psychic damage. Target dealt damage this way cannot deal damage until the start of the environment turn. That's going to be going after Idealist. And then the Hydra, the start of the environment turn, this card deals the four targets the highest HP, three melee damage each. So we need to kill that right now. Oh boy. I am going to start off by playing a Zap Apple Tree. It's a target with five HP. It says when this card is dealt damage, it deals the source of that damage two lightning damage. Applejack dealt the damage. Instead, it deals with two targets, two lightning damage each. At the end of your turn, if you discard a card, Applejack deals this card one melee damage. So her trees are things that you can buck and get some pretty nice results from. So she's going to use her power, Apple Buck, to deal a target two melee damage. We'll hit that Hydra. Draw a card. And let's see, I've got two copies of that. So I'm going to discard a card, have her hit this for one. One, and that will hit the Hydra and the Cockatrice, since that's all we can hit. So that's going to leave her with a small hand size, but we really need to burn down that Hydra. Okay, Molten Veins. Titan regains two hit points. Search my deck for Titan Form. Put it in my hand, and I can play a card, and hey, guess what? That card is Titan Form. So I'm going to use Dormant Fury, deal a target two, Infernal Damage. I'm going to destroy Titan Form and make that four damage, because oh boy, we really need to kill that thing. Twilight does not have anything useful in hand. I guess she will use Haycart's method and hit it for two. The Sentinels are not going to be able to take it out. Damn, the Sentinels are not going to be able to take it out. Anyway, her power is next Tuesday. Either place the top card of your deck beneath this card or put all cards into this card into play. This is a really, really cool power and I'm going to try and stockpile cards as much as I can throughout the first phase of this battle. Oh hey, teleport. That's not actually going to be useful. Not yet, anyway. But this is Twilight from an episode where she finds a time travel spell and tries to go back in time to tell herself not to freak out about something, and she ends up freaking out about it anyways. Oh, you know what? I'm wrong. The Sentinels can deal with it. Telekinetic Wallop. I'm going to have the Idealist hit the Hydra for three, and that's it. No more damage. And then Mainstay will Haymaker it for two, take it out, and then it goes under Nightmare Moon. That is one obstacle down, and we draw a card. All right, so we've got two cards in play. We've got one under her. We need a total of six. I'm going to go ahead and play all three right now. One, Manticore. Two, Fauna Everfree. That's unfortunate. Three, Castle of the Royal Pony Sisters. That's good. Okay, well, first of all, Castle of the Royal Pony Sisters says reduce all damage by one. I'm okay with this. So we're going to have Steven Magnet let everybody draw a card. We'll definitely profit off of this. And then we deal him a total of three cold damage, so he'll stick around. The Cockatrice tries and fails to deal damage. The Manticore deals the non-environment target with the second highest HP, one melee, and one toxic. So Titan takes two. Fauna Everfree says at the end of the environment turn, reveal cards on the top of the environment deck until monsters revealed. Put it into play, shuffle the other cards into the deck. Start of the environment turn, if there are no monsters in play, destroy this card. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Uh, so we're going to get the Ghostly. Uh-oh, that's bad. Castle of the Royal Pony Sisters says reduce all damage by one. At the start of the environment turn, the players may play the top card of the environment deck. If the card enters play this way, destroy this card. So we can go ahead and let that kill itself on the environment turn. The Ghostly, star on this card is H times two, so eight hit points. Players cannot draw cards. At the end of a player's turn, if no hero targets dealt damage that turn, this card deals itself two sonic damage. So if you can deal more than two damage to it, it's worth just hitting it. Otherwise, not so much. Okay, Nightmare Moon's turn. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. We don't have any cards in play to destroy. We might want to, because Fauna Everfree is going to overrun us real quickly. So she's just gonna discard a card off of her deck. It's a one shot, and she hits the highest for six reduced to five Titan will take that because I don't know if you noticed but she is both Twilight and Applejack's nemesis as well as the rest of the main six. Okay I'm gonna play Beating a Dead Tree. Whenever a tree is destroyed Applejack deals a non-hero target to melee damage and you may destroy this card to destroy an ongoing card. I'm probably going to leave that around for getting rid of environment cards. That being said I think we should try and take out the Cockatrice and then teleport because damn she will Apple Buck the Cockatrice for one and draw a card and she can't actually hit the tree so it sucks to be her all right she can't draw cards How about that oh boy i'm just gonna play the chaplain and use it to kill the cockatrice that's two cards under nightmare moon can't draw cards there's too much terrible crap out so we're going to teleport even though it's going to set us back a little bit shuffle the environment trash and all environment cards into play into the environment deck and then i just play the top card of the environment deck because i don't have any books <laughs> it's the castle of the royal pony sisters 
Okay, that's good. We can deal with that. Twilight puts a card under her character card and draws a card. I don't need to set up because we don't have enough. And I think these are both, yeah, these are both limited. So that's enough to get rid of a card if we need to. Well, let's put out Hippocratic Oath. I'll use Dr. Medico's power to draw an extra card, and then we'll heal Titan and the tree, I guess. Okay, so the environment turn and play the top card of the environment deck, and that will destroy this card. We get Sakura's Hut, interesting. Okay, but that destroys that, which is awesome. So at the start of the environment turn, if Poison Joke is in play, destroy that card, then destroy this card, then each hero target regains a hit point. So everybody heals one, which is just Titan again. And now we play a card. Flora Everfree. At the end of the environment turn, each environment target regains two hit points. At the start of the environment turn, the players may choose to discard the top card of each deck. If they do, deal the hero target with the highest HP, toxic damage, equal to the number of one-shots discarded this way, then destroy this card. So that's one we can get rid of easily, just by taking some damage. Oh right, and I said, I forgot to say how many cards I was going to play. Three, four, five, so yeah, we'll play one more, just for the hell of it. Timberwolves! Okay, anyway, Flora Everfree we can get rid of on the environment's turn. Zakora's Hut we can get rid of on Nightmare Moon's turn. Timberwolves, our Applejack's nemesis, says at the end of the environment turn this card deals the X non environment targets the lowest HP, 2 melee damage each where X is the number of monsters in play. So it's just going to hit the tree for 2, and since it's a zap apple, it's going to get hit back for 2. Cool, and that's it. Villain turn. So we're going to destroy a limited card and a limited card to destroy an environment card that is not a target. Teamwork puts us up to four, so she discards a card. It's another guard. Oh good, I'm glad she's in the trash. And then she hits the highest for two. That's Applejack, who takes three. Okay. Kicks McGee. First time Applejack is dealt damage by a non-hero target each turn, she deals that target two melee damage. It's worth noting that this is limited, but she has a second ongoing with a different name that does exactly the same thing. So she can retaliate a whole bunch when she gets hit. She will Applebuck the Timberwolves for a grand total of three. Draw a card. Now the question is, do I want to let somebody else kill that? Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Titan kill them. We won't hit the tree. Okay, speaking of Titan, uh, let's play Payback Time. And he will finish off the Timberwolves. One more. Time for everyone to set up. Speaking of which, Letter from the Princess. Which gets me... Smarty Pants or the Castle? I'm gonna go with the Castle. Put that into my hand and then play it. Okay, I will use the Castle's power to get Alicorn Wings. And then I'll put the top card of my deck under my card. Awesome. Okay, the Sentinels don't really have anything to do. Yeah, I'll skip to draw two. And then heal Titan and Applejack and the tree. Okay, so we will discard the top card of each deck, even though that helps Nightmare Moon. So four toxic damage to the highest, Applejack will take that. And then that is destroyed, going under her card. So we have all six cards that we need to flip her. We will just play one card this turn. It won't be the Manticore. Oh, it's the Shadow Bolts. When a hero is dealt damage by this card, their player discards a card. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the X hero targets the highest HP, two sonic damage each, where X is the current HP of this card. That's going to be... actually... oh, damn, that's going to really hurt the Sentinels. Ooh, I never thought about that. Well, sucks to be me. So they hit Titan, they hit Twilight, they hit Applejack. She bucks them for two, and that's it. That stops their rampage. I will drop one up. All right, start of the villain turn. There are six cards under her card, so she flips. And, well, you know, you already saw that, but that's that's still... I'm sorry, that's still really cool. When flipped to the side, shuffle all cards into this card into the environment deck. This becomes really interesting if you're playing some place that likes discarding its own cards. Put all relics from the villain trash into play. So we've got the Patrol of Darkness. Reduce damage dealt to Nightmare Moon and villain relics by one. The Astral Chamfron, increase damage dealt by Nightmare Moon by 1. Lunar Horseshoes, when this card will be dealt damage, reduce that damage to 1. The first time Nightmare Moon deals a target damage each turn, this card deals that target 1 melee damage. And the Umbral Throne, when Nightmare Moon will be dealt 3 or more damage from a single source, prevent that damage and discard the top card of the villain deck. So right now, we can pretty much only hit her for exactly 2 damage. Nightmare Moon herself says, if there are ever no cards in the villain deck, Nightmare Moon has brought about Eternal Night, game over. In the villain turn, Nightmare Moon deals the hero target with the highest HP, 3 infernal damage currently four. And now she unloads. Not literally. Lunar Guard. When this card enters play, put all Lunar Guards into play from the villain trash. There are no Lunar Guards in the trash. All of her guards have the Knight keyword. Okay, so she hits Titan for four. That means he gets a plus one against her. That's unfortunate. The Shoes hit him for one, which means he has a plus one against those. And then the Lunar Guard hits the highest for two. That is Twilight. Okay, okay, okay. So at this point, Twilight goes, you guys take out the throne, I'll get the patrol. She'll get it. I can lay out a lot of damage with Applebuck Season. 
Applejack deals each tree one melee damage, which means the tree hits two things for one, or yeah, for one if I'm going after relics, hit the throne and the shoes. Then Applejack deals each non-hero target two melee damage, so she'll hit Nightmare Moon for two, and pretty much everything else for one. That was pretty good. We'll buck the throne for one and draw a card. Damn, she does not have her big card draw engine running yet. Misbehavior. I'm going to reveal the top two cards in my deck. Vulcan's Judgment. That'll be good. Put that out. And he heals one. And now he can't actually do extra damage to the horseshoes. And if he does extra damage to Nightmare Moon, that'll be a problem. I think I'll just have him hit the throne for one and draw a card. Okay, it's time for a duplicate eraser. Destroy a non-character target with a keyword matching another target in play. I'm going to destroy the Page of Darkness. Light Sparkle deals herself psychic damage equal to half that target's HP when it was destroyed, rounded up, so she takes four. But now, we don't have to worry about the damage reduction, and that's a good thing. Okay, power number one. I am going to put all cards under this card into play. There's three cards. Ah, a card's method. She can hit something for two projectile damage. I think I'll hit the throne. Fail save spell. Destroy a villain ongoing or environment card. Yeah, get rid of the environment card, I guess. And hey, card's method again. More to the throne. And then second power, I guess, each player who discards a card can draw a card. Was kind of hoping for some setup there. Did not happen. And she draws. Ugh. Okay, Sentinels. Unique capabilities. This is usually a really tough fight for the Sentinels. Uh, they, they got off scot-free. Collisionous form. Shuffle and draw. And then I'm going to play Blackout. We will have Writhe deal Nightmare Moon. Well, no, shoot. If I do that, she's going to hit herself for three. I don't want that. Okay, so we'll have Writhe hit the throne for two, and it'll hit everything else for two. Destroying itself. I'm going to drop the horseshoes, because that's pretty much the same as reducing Nightmare Moon's damage for a round. Draw a card, and we'll heal Twilight Titan and Applejack. Okay, ever free forest. It's the Hydra again. <laughs> Luckily, Twilight can take care of that. Okay, Nightmare Moon. Back you fools, discard the top card of the villain deck. Destroy a hero ongoing and an equipment card. So this is why I played Vulcan's Judgment. This card is destroyed, Titan deals a villain target 5 infernal damage. Let's go ahead and knock the Chamfron down from 7 to 2. Equipment. No, no, we don't have any equipment. Okay, if no cards are destroyed this way, play the top card of the villain deck, we're safe from that. She hits the highest for 4. Applejack is going to take it. Takes 5, but then she hits back for 3. That ain't too bad. And then the Lunar Guard hits Titan, which means he gets a plus 1 against it. Okay. Put him up. If Winona is in play, she deals a target next to her for melee damage. If not, either play her from your hand or search your trash deck for her, put her into play. If you search your deck, shuffle it. She is in the trash because I discarded her because I knew I had to put him up in my hand. Winona is Applejack's pet. She's a border collie. She's pretty awesome. Play this card next to a non-hero target. When that target leaves play, move this card next to a non-hero target. The first time each turn the target next to this card will deal two or fewer damage. You may redirect that damage to another target. End of your turn, Winona deals the target next to her two melee damage. So I'm going to put this on the Chamfron. Applejack will hit Nightmare Moon for three, draw a card, and then Winona hits the Chamfron for two, killing it, and moves on to the Lunar Guard. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Misbehavior again. I'll reveal two cards again. Oh, Stubborn Goliath. Yeah, let's put that into play. Deals one, and then I will use its power. Titan deals up to two non-hero targets, two infernal damage each, until the start of your next turn. Whenever those targets would deal damage, you may redirect that damage to Titan. So I'll hit Nightmare Moon and the Hydra just for the hell of it, because it makes me feel good. Okay, Twilight plays a failsafe spell to get rid of the Hydra, because that's very important. Especially since it's Nemesis. Power number one, start stockpiling cards again, and everybody can discard the draw. Draw a card. Sentinels are going to coordinate his assault, hit Nightmare Moon for five. And then... Oh yeah, she lost her plus one. Okay, I will go ahead and nerf her even further with the TK jab. Draw a card. And heal the three big guys again. Ever free forest. Oh hey, it's Steven Mag. We don't need everyone to draw a card. Sentinels are fine. Everyone else could stand to get it. Oh, finally! Oh, finally, I got it. All right. And then he takes three. All right, Nightmare Moon plays Lunar Guard. Ah, it's a good thing we didn't kill that other one, or it would be coming right back out at full health. Nightmare Moon hits the highest for two, and that's Titan, so he gets a plus one against her. The Lunar Guard, we will have hit Nightmare Moon. And then the other one, it's Twilight. Okay, Sweet Apple Acres time. So, this is her house. It is arguably the most important card in her deck. So you may draw an extra card during your draw phase. Power is move all trees from your trash to your hand, you may play a tree. When I started designing these decks, I wanted each of the ponies to have something specific that they manipulate. Twilight just ended up sort of generally manipulating the board. But Applejack's thing is houses, and she used to have a card that dealt damage based on the number of houses in play, which is why you can find them in a couple of environments. 
Fluttershy and Rarity will have things of their own too, but houses are Applejack's thing, and having this out means I can start using the tree a little bit more. So I will buck Nightmare Moon for three, draw two cards, drop that so I can hit the tree, I have it to both the guards, move Winona over to the one that didn't die, and then Winona hits that for two. Awesome. Okay, Molten Veins. Titan form is in my trash somewhere. Put that in my hand and play it, and he heals two. He's going to use that plus one and hit Nightmare Moon for three, because there's no point in using a Stubborn Goliath. Draw a card. I'm going to play Aloysius. Power number one, store a card. Power number two, discard the draw. And then she draws a card, and Aloysius lets her play a card other than a spell, which will be Letter of the Princess. That gets me Smarty Pants again, or the tree. I'm going to get the tree. That's important. I can play a card. I'm going to play the tree. This card is play Destroy Friendship Castle. If you do, draw three cards. Hell yeah, bitches. Oh, finally. I finally got a book. Okay, we're going to be cooking now. I like reducing her damage. I think that's a good idea. Dark Delusions. Why not? Her for two. Kill the guard. Winona will move to Nightmare Moon. Oh, she doesn't have any hit points. That's... The blank one is her. And then Idealist hits her for three. And one more, reducing her damage for another round. Draw a card. And let's heal the tree and AJ and Titan. Everfree Forest. Ah, Fawn Everfree again. Okay, who needs to draw cards? Applejack does. Titan could stand too. He takes two damage. And then we reveal and we get Ghostly again and we can't draw cards. God damn it. Well, if worse comes to worst, Twilight can take care of it. And we're moon. Ruler of the Night. I love this picture. Shuffle the villain trash, reveal the top four cards, put any revealed targets into play, return the rest of the trash. And if no cards are played this way, play the top card of the villain deck. Oh yeah, and a Lunar Guard comes into play, so we bring a Lunar Guard into play, and it was one of the top four, so it doesn't actually count against it. So she got some Knigget's. Okay, Nightmare Moon hits Titan for two, reducing his damage by one, and giving him a plus one against her. But yeah, I could have had Winona redirect that. I don't think I will, though. Titan likes taking damage. Lunar Guard hits the highest for one, reducing his damage. This is a Nightwing Guard. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero with the most cards in play. One Sonic and one Infernal damage. If no damage was taken this way, discard the top card of the villain deck. So he is hitting the Sentinels, and we'll just go ahead and have Mainstay take that, so there's no extra discards. And then the Lunar Guard goes after Titan and can't break through his Titanic form. Oh yeah, Apple Bucks season. Deal each tree one melee damage. Tree hits Nightmare Moon and the Ghostly. And I deal each non-hero target two melee damage. Nightmare Moon takes three, two to everything else. Steven Magnet is immune. I will Apple Buck the Nightwing Guard and get rid of him because they're nasty. And you know what, I will still get rid of a put him up to do that because getting rid of the Ghostly is important. Okay, damage reduction wears off. Juggernaut Strike, deal a target four melee damage and or infernal damage, and each of the target from that deck one projectile damage. Oh, I forgot. Winona also hit Nightmare Moon. And then he will use his Stubborn Goliath and hit... Oh yeah, he's got a plus one against her, doesn't he? So he hits, and he's got a plus one against this guard, so that was actually two damage. Okay, anyways, Stubborn Goliath, hit Nightmare Moon for three, take out the Ghostly, because shit, and actually draw a card. Okay, book. Power one. I am going to unleash these cards. Hey, two projectile damage for each book in play. I'll hit Nightmare Moon for six. And then... Oh, teleport. Okay, sure. Reveal the top two cards. Steven Magnet and some bullshit <laughs> that's going on the bottom. So he gets a refresh. Power number two. Yeah, I'm gonna book it out. Play Dark Magic. Hit her for four. Everything else for three. And she deals herself three damage and draws a card. Oh yeah, and then she can play a card. She doesn't have any non-spells. What do I want to put on top of my deck? The letter of the princess on top of her deck. Man, Twilight hulked the fuck out there. We're almost done. Dark Delusions, hit her for five. And then one more from the Idealist. Draw a card and heal Titan and the tree and AJ. Okay, Everfree Forest, probably its last turn. Uh oh, Weather Everfree. When this card is played, deal each target two lightning damage. Writhe takes nothing. That kills the tree, and I don't have her ongoing out anymore. Start of the environment turn, shuffle the environment trash and this card into the environment deck. That's a fun card. Anyway, who wants to draw? <laughs> Applejack does, for sure. And Titan and Twilight will draw that card she put on top of her deck. So he takes three. Okay, Twilight can take care of it. Nightwing Guard. Nightmare Moon goes to deal two damage. I think we'll have her deal it to herself. Nightwing Guard hits the Sentinels. He'll hit Writhe. The first one gets reduced by two. The second one actually hits him, so there's no discard. She has 11 cards left in her deck. 
Having two of her nemeses in the same game with her turned out to be pretty easy, I think. In fact, we're going to win this turn. A Cider Season. If Sweet Apple Lakers doesn't play, each non-tree hero target regains two hit points. Let's deal with some of that there lightning damage. And then she will buck the Nightwing Guard, draw two cards, and, you know, it ain't even no thing. She'll let her dog finish off Nightmare Moon. Okay, that was a good game. Like I said, I'm not releasing these just yet, but when I do, I will have my own DLC for Tabletop Simulator, and that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's it. So, as usual, the Reavers, Sentinels, and Cauldron DLC, Tabletop Simulator, and My Little Pony are not officially licensed greater than games, and none of this is officially belonged to Hasbro and DHX, so support the official release. God, that was weird.